Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today. Starfield continues to be completely unpredictable, and when they plan on dropping information, I kind of had an inkling they'd be done with Starfield information after giving us a tease of the game's official soundtrack, but now we have more with a conversation between Todd Howard, Angela Browder, and Matt Carafano, game director, studio director, art director, all getting together to talk Starfield. And with that comes some pretty interesting news. It's been interesting to watch the conversation on Starfield. Some people are ramping up their excitement as they show more concept art and talk more about what this game actually is. And some surprisingly are getting tired of the talk and want to see the game, which I totally understand and respect. It's just hilarious to me as someone who's covered Bethesda Game Studios for pretty much their entire channel's lifetime that this company never talks, so them just continuing to do this with Starfield is hilarious, and it makes me actually really excited to see what they're going to show us because they're removing a lot of the speculation. So we're going into all that information in today's video. If you're new here and you're looking for more Starfield information, you are in the proper place. Consider subscribing. We're at 461K, moving on to 500K. Pretty crazy to think about. Anyway, thank you so much for lending me some of your time today. Let's talk Starfield. Beginning with... A number of significant quotes that I pulled out of this seven minute video. You can check it out for yourself if you'd like to. It's on the official Bethesda YouTube channel. One of them is Todd starting off saying, all the paths that you didn't take that make it special to you. That you feel like when you finish that quest, you feel like you accomplished something that week. This was stand out to me because Bethesda Game Studios really said a number of times now that Starfield is more of a hardcore RPG. We've heard that there's going to be backgrounds now and a mixture of skills between the likes of Elder Scrolls and Fallout in Starfield. And so hearing that there are paths that you can take on things maybe you didn't see. I don't know if Todd's speaking about the world space here. To me, I feel like he's talking about quest lines and playing them over and, and say doing something like a good path, an evil path, the morally gray path, what have you. That just makes me really excited because it's the one thing that I feel Bethesda Game Studio has been missing in their last number of entries. So to hear that continuously be emphasized in a number of interviews, a number of talks with Starfield, of course, talk is cheap. I get that. But just to hear that it's even a focus for BGS is a drastic change from where they once were. They also talked about a brand new generation of developers moving into Bethesda Game Studios who grew up on their games, and they came in wanting to stay true to the worlds that they had actually grown up on. They're looking to maintain that. This is an interesting mixture because they also talk about how a lot of the Bethesda Game Studios devs there have been working together for roughly two decades now. This is most of the Bethesda Game Studios staff. And when you look at what's going on with Activision, possibly PlayStation, Ubisoft, you hear a lot of awful stories around the industry, and from what I've heard, it seems like Bethesda is a really good place to work, and especially with their ability to retain their employees, I think those results speak for themselves because, unfortunately, they're an absolute anomaly when you look across the industry. So to see that that's there is just staggering on its own. But bringing in new, fresh ideas, I think was really important for Bethesda Game Studios because... They seem to kind of get into a rhythm with Fallout 4, and then with 76, I think they went so far off the draft board that they had no idea what they were actually doing because they sort of were losing their sense of identity. So I think some youth entering the game that remembers, this is why we love Bethesda Game Studios games, helping craft the new generation of experiences can actually be quite good moving forward. And speaking of generations, What's hilarious is that they um, they continued to talk about Skyrim in this video. Even in a seven-minute Starfield video, they talked about Skyrim for a good couple of minutes. I was like, man, really? But it's to tail into their next point, which is they're already kind of preparing for modding. They talk about how they build this game. They put as much as they can into it. They give it its first life, and the modders come in with their tools and give it a second life. There was some concern I noted when I was talking with some people on Twitter, which was that... They don't like that Bethesda Game Studios already beefing up the modding game. It kind of sounds like they're leaning into it a little bit more. And a lot of people think that's because Bethesda just lets the modders fix everything. And I think to some extent, there is some truth to that, as much as it hurts for a lot of people to admit. The reason that is, is because there are bugs that have carried over from multiple Bethesda Game Studios games that modders have been able to fix with unofficial patches that people download day one because they know Bethesda Game Studios will never fix them. And BGS, knowing these patches exist, does really nothing but goes, hey, it's there, and it's the second life. So I get people's frustration with that, but I also like that they're embracing modding because they focus very much on hiring modders, something that I remember a number of years ago when I talked to modders, they said that this would wipe away their ability 
to actually be hired in the industry, which you would find kind of strange, right? Like, hey, you worked on this fan-made project. It's incredible what you did on your own with really no budget. How can we get you hired in our studio? But what I had talked to with monitors, again, multiple years ago, was this would damage their ability to get hired, especially if they handled it poorly. And you look at something like Fallout the Frontier and how that ended up rolling out, and that's where some of the damage could come in, where Bethesda and multiple studios might go like, eh, you know what? Never mind. But I like that they're embracing modding nice and early, talking about it. There was some concern with that, given that the game is going to be available on Game Pass. How will modding files be on Game Pass? It seems like Xbox is making that a focus to figure that out. And so I'm just happy to know that this continues to be a priority into the next generation, because even if it doesn't matter to you for Starfield, I look at something like Elder Scrolls 6, where it absolutely will matter, because who knows when you get Elder Scrolls 7. So... I like that they're focusing on modding, but I understand people's frustration with them letting the community fix their bugs. Again, Bethesda continues to hint at the idea that Starfield will involve some form of free space exploration, because Todd talks about defying gravity and taking off from your spaceship and how it's such a phenomenon in science. And then Matt Carafano speaks on how exploration is actually really important in this game. He talks on how it's more science-based. It's more of a realistic backing. It's a grounded game, grounded setting. And he specifies again that it's all about exploration. To me, this doesn't reek of No Man's Sky. So I would like to calm those worries there just because when you even looked at the leaked gameplay screenshots, we literally saw like ammo counters and stuff. Like there's going to be combat. They talked about monsters and all these quests you can do. Bethesda Game Studios isn't going to get rid of those types of things in their games. What I think they're going to do, though, is enhance their point A to point B. So that's one of my favorite things about BGS games. And as I got older, it's what I realized I appreciated most is the things that happen when you're going from one location to the next and the way that they craft them so carefully where no matter which area you enter from, it's almost like it was designed for you to see it from that angle. Like it presents itself so well and then you enter there and there's a story within this dungeon or this building what have you and that to me is what's so important to know that they're focusing on exploration with this game where of course if we throw a spaceship into the mix bethesda game studios games outside of horses never really had vehicles that you could get into and explore the world with so this will be a huge change to the pace of the exploration and of course give it an entirely new feel and what happens in that point a to point b if say we take off from one planet and go to the next that's what truly excites me. In that exploration, they mentioned that the mechanics of the world are entirely different in Starfield, but there are still similarities. These similarities being you can play the game in first person. There's your coffee cups. You can touch everything. There's a day and night system that's still there, but they never specify what's different. And again, this leads to what I personally believe is very much the case. We've even seen it in, of course, the Starfield reveal trailer that you're going to be able to get into your spaceship. Now, a lot of people don't say this in complete certainty we don't know if it's like the outer worlds where you get in you look at your map you pick a spot on the map and it's like an invisible loading screen if you will i'm thinking it's going to be more along the lines of get in take off no man's sky level like boom into the atmosphere you go then boom onto the planet you go and then you land in a specific spot and that's all there is to it that to me would say different mechanics of the world while still retaining those similar things in a bgs game where once you get off that ship it's first person you're going to pick up that futuristic coffee cup i have no idea it's going to be different in that manner. This part is what excited me, I'd say, the most. And I don't know if it's shared across the community, but to me, the best thing about a BGS game is that step out moment, that introduction to the world. And there's none better than, I think, Fallout 3. That is the hands down best introduction to a world space I have ever and probably will ever see in a video game because it really presents everything that you can go to so beautifully, but yet it's so bleak and it's so foreign there's just a special energy to that todd howard says there's two step out moments in starfield not just one but two i'm wondering what that's like maybe your first planet and then your first takeoff i'm wondering what he means by that but to me i think the step out moment is such a defining quality in a bgs game uh, so many try to do it some replicate it quite well don't get me wrong but there's no better feeling than even fallout 4 just rising out of vault 111 and seeing the whole wasteland and seeing how it changed from that prologue, there's something special with that. So knowing that they got two of those is exciting. The last of the quotes is them talking about concepting things in their world. And I think this level of thought is, again, really important for confidence in BGS. It's pretty common in game development to establish your pillars. In this case with Starfield, probably space exploration, the planets you're going to go to, the themes of said planets. And then while you have the bone there, the skeleton, you have to put meat on the bone. So 
that's where what they talk about here with short stories, bedtime stories, toys that children play with, things that they eat, and much more like entertainment, art, etc. And they showed new concept art alongside all of this, which again, talk is cheap. Concept art always represents the idea of what we hope it'll look like. But if it's anything, again, as I've always said, close to this, I will be very keen to explore this. It's very, very, very Mass Effect inspired. And that makes me extremely happy to see because I think that Mass Effect really leads the charge in sci-fi gaming. And to see that Bethesda might be taking a page or two out of their notebook when it comes to the art direction is really exciting. But just seeing the level of detail that's going into the thought process, really not the, of course, game, we don't know that yet, but the thought process has me, again, pretty keen to see what Starfield ends up being. So I'm excited to see people are getting excited about Starfield. It seems like maybe Fallout 76 is in the rear view mirror for a lot of people, but of course, I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts in the comments down below. How are you feeling about everything BGS had to share with us today on Starfield? Again, please do fire away. Looking forward to your thoughts. Other than that, be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Links are in the description down below as always. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the content we're doing here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.